Very few people today have not heard of the name Spartacus, and most have at least some sort of basic understanding of what that name means. Yet it would also be fair to say that almost nobody today knows the names of the leaders of the other major Roman slave revolts, Eunus, Cleon, Salvius or Athenion. The gladiator uprising led by Spartacus was actually the third servile war to beset the Roman Republic in a 65 year period between 135 and 71 BC. Whereas Spartacus's war had been fought for control of mainland Italy, both of the previous slave revolts had been centred upon the recently acquired island of Sicily, where the final expulsion of the Carthaginians during the Second Punic War, two generations earlier, had led to great changes in land ownership. Despite the fact that both of these conflicts lasted for upwards of three years, and the rebels during the First Servile War, at least, are said to have fielded similar numbers of freed slaves as Spartacus's revolt, somewhere around the 100,000 mark, the two earliest servile wars are almost unheard of today. By the 130s BC, the island of Sicily had been under Roman control for well over 50 years. Yet unlike the great city to the north, much of its population was now made up of slaves who toiled on estates ran by wealthy Roman and Italian landowners who had profited from the Carthaginian expulsion from Sicily after the Second Punic War. It was during that conflict that native Sicilians had been forced to choose allegiance to either Rome or Carthage, with those who had made the wrong decision suffering the repercussions later. After the war, the Sicilians who had sided with Carthage had their lands confiscated and often found themselves slaves, whereas those who sided with the Romans became rich out of the misfortunes of their countrymen. According to the Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, a large number of Roman slave owners did not provide enough food or clothing for their slaves, some of whom were forced to turn to banditry or foraging to survive. The poorest Sicilians suffered the most, and finally, after decades of increasing tension, war broke out between the haves and the have-nots. Very little is known of the First Servile War, and everything written about it was written by the victors. Yet the numbers that supposedly participated in this minor footnote in history are staggering. Diodorus Siculus, a Greek historian writing 100 years after the uprising, claimed that some 200,000 slaves joined the rebellion. Likewise, Roman historian Titus Livius puts the number at a still very high 70,000. Whilst it is unknown how the revolt started, or even how it ran for much of its course, a central figure quickly emerges as the overall leader of the rebels. His name was Eunice, and unlike the more famous Spartacus, who had been a gladiator prior to his rebellion, Eunice had been an entertainer. Said to have hailed from the former Seleucid city of Apamea in Syria, Eunice had gained much renown whilst still a slave for his skill at sleight of hand magic tricks, fire breathing, singing and various other roles at the Symposia. After the revolt broke out in 135 BC, Eunice apparently rose to prominence through his reputation as a wonder worker and prophet. He apparently claimed to receive visions and communications from the goddess Atagartis, a prominent Syrian deity from his homeland. One of the stories about Eunice even claims that whilst still a slave, he would sing humorous songs about the inherent inequality within Sicily, often stating that his aristocratic audience would be killed or enslaved when he became king, presumably to much laughter from his unassuming audience. According to the story, after the prophecy came true and the rebellion did finally break out, Eunice is said to have spared those who had tipped him well over the years. Little is known of Eunice's actual participation in the war, as only his enemies left accounts of him. All of his victories are credited to his general, a Cilician slave named Cleon. Cleon is said to have been Eunice's closest confidant, and almost as soon as they met, Cleon pledged his allegiance to Eunice who must have been a charismatic figure to have been able to stitch together such a coherent uprising from the various disenfranchised elements in Roman Sicily. One of the ways that Eunice kept the slaves together could have been the prophecies that he supposedly claimed to receive from Atagartis. One of the most important and earliest prophecies he is said to have made was that he would successfully capture the city of Enna in central Sicily. Early on in the war, with the help of Cleon's skill in battle, this did in fact happen. Described as a proficient fire breather from his days as an entertainer, Diodorus Siculus describes Eunice as standing in the front ranks of the assault on Enna, leading his men into the fray whilst blowing fire out of his mouth. After the battle, Eunice was crowned as king, and he even adopted a new name 
Antiochus, a title which had been used by the Seleucids, the once mighty successor state to Alexander the Great, which still clung on to power in Syria. Eunice called his followers Syrians, and together they conquered several more important cities in the central and eastern portions of the island. For three years, Eunice, Cleon, and 70,000 former slaves attempted to forge themselves an independent nation in Sicily. And during those three years, for all intents and purposes, Eunice ruled as a king. He minted his own coins, was capable of maintaining a large force of soldiers on campaign for long periods of time, and he was successful in defeating several Roman forces sent against him. By 132 BC, after a renewed Roman assault led by consul Marcus Paperna, Cleon fell in battle, and Eunice was forced to seek refuge in a nearby cavern along with the remaining members of his court. Before he could be punished, however, he died, thus ending the First Servile War. The fate of those involved in the uprising is not recorded, but considering that every slave captured after Spartacus' uprising was crucified, it can be assumed that a similar fate awaited at least some of Eunice's slaves. For the poorest in society, the situation in Sicily didn't improve after the war. In 104 BC, a second servile war broke out, this time instigated by Italian slaves fighting against their living conditions. One of the leaders of the rebellion, Salvius consciously followed in Eunice's footsteps by assuming the name Trifon from a famous Seleucid ruler associated with the same city in Syria that Eunice is said to have hailed from. After joining forces with a Cilician named Athenion, the two former slaves are said to have equipped and fielded an army of 20,000 infantry and 2,000 cavalry. Their revolt was only put down after four years and serious efforts by the consul Manius Aquilius, 